Cloak and Dagger? With Kunai Dead Branch. Yep, well, well, well. What an exciting day to take a Storm of Steel over a Wraith Form here. Over a Wraith Form of all things. Come on, let's go. Who's a rare? 100 gold, right in a rare, or boss swap? Hmm. Ooh, I like this. This is good stuff. Relic into... Ooh. Only problem is that in order to get there, we have to get past this elite. And that might not be that easy to do. Also an option into this elite, maybe? Hmm. But ideally... Uh, that's not an acceptable start. Damn. I was hoping we could go to this store with 100 gold or something. Do we choose a rare and hope that that allows me to bust through the early elites and clobber this axe? That might be a reasonable pick. The rare that we choose could be an Alchemize, it could be a Die Die Die, a Glass Knife, even an Unload would be acceptable. Against the Slime Boss, I'd be okay with a thousand cuts. An adrenaline is fine. Okay, let's choose a rare here. What about Phantasmal Killer? Next turn your attacks do double damage. Interesting, a pretty good upgrade. A little bit questionable in the early game. Or there is that unload, just do 14 damage, discard all non-attack cards, that's pretty dang solid. But it's not a glass knife. I think the unload is the safer choice. Fantastical Killer is all about the draws. Or a tools, maybe. Tools would let our uh, early deck building be interesting. We could take, like, reflexes and stuff. How well do I rate the boss swap on Silent? I personally don't like it very much on the, on the Silent. I do think the Ring of the Snake is an excellent, excellent, excellent starting relic. We not like Tools to trade? I think it, Tools is fine. The problem with Tools is that it doesn't help me kill Act 1 Elites very well. Which is... Exactly what we need right now is the ability to do the 50 to 100 damage required to take out Gremlin Ob and the three sentries. So I think that leads me towards taking unload to start, which does sting a bit. But we'll see how we do. 14 damage for one energy is a good deal, that's for sure. The fact that the unload discards all non-attack cards in your hand is not exactly an upside. Look at that perfect Jowworm fight, and a block pot too. More elite killing power, zero cost masterful stab is pretty sweet. Sure, it gets more expensive every time you take damage, but just don't take damage for it. Easy. E-Z. Another good potion. And some AoE, which is particularly good against the slime boss, or we could start specking into poison. I think with two good attacks already, let's just grab an AoE card, this dagger spray. Four damage to all enemies twice, upgraded at six to all enemies twice, and we will hit all enemies twice. Maybe more.
And we've gotten so much damage into this starting deck that Act 1 is kind of falling away before us at the moment. Do we add a Slice? Local Nigger is reasonable too. Slice is just zero cost damage. I also really like this card in Act 1, and I think that's the last damage card we need to add. Should be good from here. Hey, Cesar Roll, the Prismatic Ladder is not still going. It did unfortunately meet a tragic end. Bring one of the last streams. Okay, we'll kill you with Dagger Spray. Or not? See, this is 22. 22 plus 12 is 34. We don't kill next turn, no matter what. Okay. Just take 7 or whatever. Oh, yeah, the last loss is not up to date, though. Understood. Update that. Was defect. Trying to reprogram and did not get there. More attacks? I don't want another slice. Quick Slash is reasonable, though. As is a Shkua. Skewer being an X-Cost, a good way to spend all the energy that you've got. Is he peasy-like? You know? Hmm. Take, take the draw card. But that's it. We're done. No more. Really good fight, only four damage taken. Ooh, piercing Whale. Piercing Whale is a good block augmentation. I take the Tactician as something to discard, but I really want this Whale right now. Shutting down any enemy with multi-attacking abilities. Go ahead and keep the current potions as we fight the three sentries. Two with Survivor, but we want to... Just, uh, let's just use this, see what happens. Okay, that's actually fine. And then if we draw a Masterful Stab, it cleanly kills the back sentry here. Beautiful. Pillow heals us more when we rest. We're also offered a well-laid plans to retain stuff. I like that with Piercing Whale a lot. It does make the unload a little bit awkward already, but, well, what can you do? I'll take it. 
I don't think I'm going to upgrade it, though, until we definitely don't get a Runic Pyramid. Greetings, Dagger Spray. Thanks for making my life easy. Corpse Explosion allows us to kill all enemies when one enemy dies. It's also excellent artifact removal, removing two artifact charges from one foe. Brilliant. Okay, first upgrade is Dagger Spray. Not sure about the second one. Ooh, Kunai. We play three attacks in one turn, gain a dex. This deck definitely wants something like a Bleed Dance now. This is plus four, this is plus four. Rather upgrade the Quick Slash over the Unload. This is also plus four. This is three more poison on the Explodey Boy. That's pretty good. More Weaken on Neutralize is pretty good. Let's get that Neutralize upgraded. Although we want more damage right now. Maybe the Quick Slash upgrade is the most relevant for these two elites. That feels right. Yeah. Let's upgrade Quick Slash. Like I said, I'm not going to upgrade Willy plans until next act. It's illegal. Run one Corpse Explosion. That's going to be 654. Which is 15 damage, or two strikes is 18 damage. Nice! Good job, Unload! Very good job. That was close. Okay, now I definitely want a Dead Branch, because er, sorry, a uh, Bleed Dance, because we have a Dead Branch. Whenever we exhaust a card, add a new random card to your hand, and that makes Backstab hella good. Because it turns into a new card immediately for zero energy. I will add any number of Backstabs to this deck here. You hear me? Any number. Loken Dagger with Kunai Dead Branch. Yep. Piercing Oil was good too, but not as good as Cloak and Dagger. Strike Defend. Does not kill because the poison will not apply from the Corpse Explosion. So if we go Corpse Explosion, Quick Slash, we take 10. The debuffs go in uh, order of the text on the card. So 6 poison is first, and then the explosion effect is second. I think what I'm going to do is, given that I'm drawing, this seems reasonable. Take 
four. Easy. Prayer Wheel now gives us additional card rewards from regular enemies. Make use of that in Act 2. For now, I'm just going to take an event here. It was sentries again. Get a free happy flower, but I'll fight them for the card reward and the money, because they do give a lot of money here. Triple Cloak and Dagger. Brilliant. ish gold, as well as a potion and one of these cards if we want one. Acrobatics is reasonable here. I think I'm just gonna not take a card and we're gonna upgrade these Cloak and Daggers. Because more shivs means more kunai and more dead branch. Crazy strong. Strikes. Hmm. The greatest split in the world. Apply the Corpse Explosion effect to one of them, but I doubt it's going to let us kill that slime. The poison, though. Ooh, actually, Phantasmal Killer will let me kill that slime. Although, I see that we're looking at a lot of damage here. is not half of 50, or yes, 26 will split. Okay. We do this. Ooh. Perfect. Kaboom. GG. Well, well, well. What an exciting day. I have a real reason to take a Storm of Steel over a race form here. Storm of Steel creates a bunch of shivs. Normally the dis disadvantage to this card is that uh, your hand is empty after you pay one energy to get a bunch of shivs. But with Kunai Dead Branch, it's going to give us an entirely new hand of cards. In addition to doing a lot of damage and scaling our dexterity. Over a Wraith Form of all things. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Oh, we were supposed to do Wraith Form Sneko Eye? 
Well, that's lame. <laughs> we still might take the Sneko Eye. It's never a Velvet Choker, that's for sure. Maybe it's a Coffee Dripper? Coffee Dripper is very reasonable. More energy with Dead Branch is exceptional. More energy with Dead Branch is exceptional. Sneko Eye is a little unpredictable. It's more card draw, which is good. And we can transition into Sneko because of the Prayer Wheel pretty effectively. But I think this Dripper is completely fine. Take a Dripper. Two Dripper runs back to back, I'm in. Do want to head to a shop pretty quickly. Fortunately, the pathing agrees. Shops are good. Also agrees that elites are good. What did this one? <laughs> Yo. Actually play the accuracy? Amazing. And boop. Alright, good turn one. Yet another Cloak and Dagger? No, another Backstab's even better. Oh. <laughs> or, or I can just do both. I already have two Cloak and Daggers. I don't want more unupgraded ones, but I do want an infinite number of Backstabs. As previously discussed. Yes! Good job, Storm of Steel. Deflect's pretty good with Kunai. Lake Sweep's not bad either. These are all bad. Let's take one Leg Sweep. More weaken. It's gotta be good. Membo card is here, Dark Shackles is here, Infinite Blades is here, and the boot is here. What about the boot, though? The Membo card gives us a 50% discount on all products. You know, this Ceramic Fish is probably actually value, huh? Nine gold when we add a card to the deck, we need break even after only... Nine cards added, and I'm going to add at least one card here. Are we going to add eight more cards to the deck with Prayer Wheel? The answer is yes. Yes, we are. So I'm unironically going to buy this Ceramic Fish. Okay. If you say so, game. This is a 9 gold rebate. Boot's actually theoretically useful here. Boot makes Storm of Steel do more damage. Oh no. Or I could just upgrade the Storm of Steel. Unironically, Infinite Blades, question mark? It's not... It's not bad, right? It's on sale. It's only... 12 gold. Okay, I'll do it. <laughs> For 12 gold. What about expertise? <clears throat> With all of our pseudo card draw... Feels to me like something we might not need. Ooh. Ooh. In a recursive loop! <laughs> 
Seven dexterity, by the way. Glorious. Yes, upgraded Cloak and Dagger. Not a bad Calc Gamble either. And an upgraded <laughs> Cloak and Dagger. <laughs> it's just Cloak and Dagger is all the way down, really. There's also, I guess, like, a Catalyst here, but who needs that? Who needs that? Give me the nine gold. <laughs> Please. <laughs> He's gone mad with power. I do these? Thinking about it. Let's start here. Yeah. Also order on this defense. Damn it. One hit point, though. There we go. You're doing nothing. Great with dexterity. And another cloak and dagger. <laughs> yeah, I'm only taking the upgraded ones, because like, really, come on. But genuinely though. Ooh, good block. More blur. My blur. More cards on turn one. Not two more with a bag of prep. Meaning we can add yet more copies of Backstab. We want them. Do I want to go to that store? Regardless of whether I want to or not, I do want to go to this question mark over else. So yeah, let's go this way. We're probably actually going to go to the store. We'll have like 250 gold with Membo card. So let's go for one more elite over here. Makes our uh, Storm of Steel a lot better on turn one as well.
Not bad. Upgraded fumes is kind of interesting, but I don't think actually helpful. And I'll take a real blade dance. Three shivs. The price of one. Sounds perfect. We are going to need some ways to deal with a heart's beat of death. After image would be a good addition. decks from the kunai on turn one. Oh my god. Damn, dude. Blade Dance number two. Okay, that's that's enough of those. The Courier to go with our membership card Ceramic Fish, meaning we can buy all the nine gold cards we want. Glorious. It's glorious. All right, I guess we can upgrade the well Aid plans now. We passed on, uh, Snekawai. I'm not taking a Rick Grimmin. Yes. Plus ten, perfect. <laughs> Please have mercy, porcelain. These are zero cost attacks. Backflip plus is pretty good, though. Definitely gonna take a gamble. It says exhaust on it. Cards. More cards. Hey, and we got black. Oh my god, we're gonna be rich. This is gonna be a hundred gold with membership card courier. So that's 240 gold, essentially. Plus two relics, one uncommon, one rare. Any hope? For an old coin? Seventy. <laughs> Blah. Well done, weakling. Clap, clap, clap. Give me that victory. Did you shoot? See, like, I can't actually have hand space for these blade dances sometimes. Borg. Singing Bowl to go with our Prayer Wheel means we can gain tons of max HP in the future acts by skipping up to two cards per combat for four max HP per combat. We also got the Tori reducing unblocked attack damage, and yeah, I'll take hit points. It's hit point time. <clears throat> I 
And now that I found the one event that I wanted, I think we just take more combats. Pay nine gold for two max hit points? <laughs> it's a pretty good deal. Pretty good deal. Get a dagger spray, and a finisher is actually, like, theoretically decent, but I'd rather just generate finishers at random. Look at the hit points. To the store! So, someone who is asking, how does the courier refresh work? When you buy something from the store, how does the courier know what to replace it with? Store layouts have a fixed pattern to them. You've got five cards at top, and there's always two attacks at the left, two skills in the middle, and then the far right is always a power. And if you buy any of these cards, they'll be replaced by another card of the same type. So, replace with attack, replace with skill, or replace with power. Relics get replaced with a random relic. There's no indication on the rarity or anything of that. And colorless cards get replaced with another colorless card. We're definitely going to buy this preserved insect. To make elites easier. 59 gold for a strawberry. That's so cheap. And that's right, Byronium. The replacement items in the shop are not affected by the plus 10% cost of Ascension 16. Meaning you get a bonus discount, essentially. Do I want any of these cards? I take the strawberry. How about a Gurya? Actually, Gurya is kind of hype. Oh man, Gurya is really hype. Oh, man. So I talked earlier today about how I don't think it's generally worth it to buy Gurya. Here's a case where I think it is. One, we're plenty strong right now. Two, it's only 120 gold. And three, we gain so much damage from, from one point of strength. I'll take it. Do I want a... Actually, Finesse is really good. Finesse is really good. That maneuver costs only one gold. Take the Finesse. Take nothing else. Lift! Let the lifting begin. Who needs to pay one gold for that maneuver when you can just get it for free? Bad turn one. We did hundred of damage. So blocking. What even is blocking, really?
Get him. So close. Come on. No! Yes! GG! GG. An Envenomed Phantasmal Killer or an Alchemize, giving us a random potion for one energy. I do like Alchemize here. Beat of Death is going to tear us apart, but I think the Kunai is actually going to enable us to, to counteract the Beat of Death. Nice. Phantasmal Killer could be good too. We could even make use of the Envenom, truly. With all these little hits, one poison per attack is good. Yeah, the Alchemize also exhausts, which is really what I like about it. Let's grab that. Doesn't feel like a very good empty cage, but it feels like a completely fine fusion hammer. Giving us additional energy each turn, but uh, preventing us from upgrading at rest sites. We have to recall, and we have two lifts available, so we can get up to three fires before we even feel any penalty at all from Fusion Hammer. My name is not Shady, thank you so much for the Prime sub, welcome. Welcome, welcome. More chances to remove strikes. Sounds good to me. Getting the basics out of this deck ASAP is, I think, a priority at the, at the moment. Want to make sure we hit a couple of rest sites. Yeah. Oh, elite. Elite. Lift. Elite. Recall and lift again in Act 3. Max events until floor 40 to try to get, um, what, Mind Bloom? 999 gold? That would be spicy. But the shops aren't positioned in such a way that we could actually benefit from that. I would not want a normality in this deck. No, thank you. Now, if I had Om Omomori, I might feel differently there. Alchemize. Just kill it. Fruit juice. And another backstab. Welcome. And another Cloak and Nigger Plus. Also welcome. I will continue to add such cards endlessly. Literally endlessly to this deck. Ooh, Bronze Scales is good too. Doing three damage back when we're attacked. Very good against the heart. Small Minds, thank you so much for the nine months. Dead Branch and I both make for silly runs on their own, but together, oh boy, is this a fun Silo run. Flash of Steel is pretty good too, especially with the Gurya. Andrill, we could buy it. Could buy it. I'll take the Zabron scale. Shame about the potion belt. Do I take the flash of steel? Sure. Sure. Don't forget, we get nine gold back.
more cloak and daggers. Blinklad Plus is okay, but without any actual reason to do poison damage, I'm just gonna take some hit points. Feel really good about it. Event? One event. Blowing Tesseract, that's three card options, could be six additional max HP. There's also some good stuff like, oh, I don't know, Apotheosis to upgrade everything. Panache to do a bunch of damage. Another Flash of Steel here for Kunai value. Medic Entrance is another turn one exhausting attack. It's gonna add these. Money. Money and... Go with Apotheosis over Panache. That is a good Panache, though. I'm gonna go at, though. Panacea not bad either, honestly. Honestly. Curses, okay? Is that no curses? Plus is okay. I'll take it. All right, lead number two. The giant head. Giant head is gonna have a bad time here. Play so many cards per turn, and I just threw a finisher. So, uh, oops. My. Oh. Oh my. Bullet time, huh? Okay. Sixteen stacks of, uh, of slow. Eighteen stacks of slow means this is nineteen times ten. Wait, let's make it more than that. 20 times 11. GG. And there's a real after image. I'm gonna take that for a lot of reasons. We probably gonna want to upgrade that too. But wait, I can't. Well, I'm just gonna take it regular style then. Ah. turn one. 
Kill, that is the question. Dancing. Two poison per shift. Wait a minute. <laughs> Prepared grand finale, you say? Alright. You got it. You got it. Index 30. To 61 poison. Oof. We got there. GG. Cool. Fight transient. We're already up to 94 health. The singing bull is 16 hit points, and we've barely gotten started here. This way. It's this way, surely. Oh yeah, we're going. We're no. We're going to do two leads. That's right. Nemesis. Turn one energy is right by me. Ten hit points would have been good, but we must take the Sapphire Key. We're still gonna go over a hundred here, after all. Oh my. Quality next turn, please. Stab number four. Escape plan number four.
Mumble Nintendo asks, any tricks to avoiding burnout streaming so many hours and playing the same game so often? That is definitely one of the big challenges that I've faced during my streaming career is how how to play Slay the Spire for now almost 5,000 hours uh, without getting tired of it. And there's a there's a few key tricks. Um, avoiding frustration is a big one. If you find yourself getting frustrated or upset by the game, it's time to either take some space and play something different for a while, or it's time to change how you're playing your game. Pushing, trying to push through frustration or boredom is, uh, I think, what really exaggerates and makes burnout impossible to overcome. So for me, that means playing games other than Play the Spire every now and then, and there's lots of other wonderful roguelites we've discovered for the channel. And it also means varying how I play Slay the Spire. The, the Ladder Streak Challenge is, in part, a creation of my own in order to avoid burnout in Slay the Spire, because I personally really enjoy trying new things and having unusual outcomes with the, the style of runs you get doing Ladder. That's what works for me personally. Everything, everyone's gonna have their own, uh, own different feelings about that, but I think it matters quite a bit. Boy, this this turn one though. This turn one though. Calipers might be good here, letting us retain block from turn to turn and get another blade dance? Nah. I'm good. A way to increase your mental stamina. Practice makes proficient. Um, one thing that, that does help with that, I think, would be a, a meditation practice of some kind learning how to focus and examine one's thoughts. Now, meditation is not for everybody, but I think it's, if you're looking to to develop that kind of mental skill, and it is, it is a skill, unfortunately, there's no like quick and easy solution. Any kind of change to your personal habits, whether they be bodily habits or thought habits, takes practice, time, and repetition. Move with these potions. Maybe kill the dagger? Maybe. Here, die. That's right, I have gremlin horn. Yeah, I should. Hey, no problem. I hope that at least some piece of that ends up uh, helpful to you, Mobile. Burnout is a, a challenging problem when it comes to gaming and especially streaming. So I hope you're able to find something that works for you. There's an apotheosis in this deck. Learn that. And several grand finales, apparently. Thingy giveth block on turn two. Paper plus expertise plus tools of the trade, not plus. Take me up to a hundred. Oh my. Just 
Beautiful. So beautiful. More backstabs! And an accuracy? Also yes. Should deal more damage? Sure. Why not? And I guess we'll try to get after images from the power potions or something? That seems fine. <laughs> this turn one though. Upgrade the cards that come out of these backstabs rather than the backstabs themselves. Okay, now that I have calipers, I have a real reason to use the Dark Shackles here. So I will. Should have burst that setup so I could set up expertise too. This is fine though. the blunkening. Oh my. Three after images. Okay. I'm in. Twenty damage per ship. Can you win the game with accuracy? Yes! GG. Next up is the Time Eater, and that's a bit spooky. Time Eater will automatically end our turn every time we play 12 cards. Now, that doesn't mean we can't win this fight, it just means it's going to be more difficult. This deck plays an awful lot of cards. Let's get all these powers down.
long as we can play exactly 12 cards per turn, I think we'll be okay. It's not exactly 12. Hmm. Oh no, not again. Yeah, we are starting stuttering a little bit here with our bit rape. Apologies. That's right, we brought him below half, so that was fine. Then. Brilliant. Points of strength, spooky stuff. See, yeah, if you haven't seen that there are uh, four characters now. That was one of the, the most recent uh, big updates, was the addition of the Watcher. There hasn't been a whole lot since then. But if you haven't seen Watcher, then there's lots of new stuff. There'll be new, new relics, new potions, new cards, an entire new character to play. Lots of stuff. To thump, to thump, to thump, a deep pulsing dread could be felt throughout the room is this. The heart of the spire, the source of all these random cards. Is this? The spirey wiry. Alright, there's our three points of strength. And an interesting store. A Dolly's Mirror allows us to duplicate anything in the deck. Looks like we're going to 50 cards here. You can dupe the after image, that's perfect. I think that's what we want. We can also buy a duplication potion to dupl an ap duplicate an after image with. So let's lose one power pot, take the dupe pot. Dupe the panache. Real. Although genuinely, the after image, well, no, they're they're a lot of block. They're tons of block. Remove another strike, which we would definitely want to do. Let's see what's behind Dully's mirror first. Whetstone. Okay. Might take a discovery here. It's two cards in one. It's pretty all right. Don't want a hand agreed. And I can buy footwork or a relic. I guess I'll buy the cheapest relic. I also want two more cards, don't I? Just to say that we're at 50. So let's take a panache then. And a sucker punch. Bring it to an even 5 0. Oh, 50 cards. Just because I can. I cut these turn ones. <laughs>
Good fight. Keep it at exactly 50. I also want to have exactly 100 max HP, so in order to achieve that, we're going to skip instead of plussing the, plussing the max H2 button. Absolutely not. All right. Monsieur Hearts. This looks painful. Yeah, this looks painful. Take two damage back every time we play a card, unfortunately. You have... Second and Venom is the best of these. Not actually block. Okay. Bit of a low roll. Thousand cuts. More blocking, maybe. Good. Okay, happy to see well laid plans on turn one. Somehow this is zero cost. We do the damage cap on turn one, basically. Not even going to play that accuracy. That's more like it. <laughs> Ooh, stuck a whale. I could make the Masterful Stab one cost again. Brilliant. Alright, but real talk, I'm running out of block pretty quickly here. There we go. Keep that. All right, let's see what happens. From six to two. Ooh, and it's zero cost blade dance, good. number. However, we have ways around big numbers. Tori means I only take one here? And I don't think this heart is gonna get another turn. GG.
please exactly die to my thorns. Thanks. EG, everyone. Hey, hey, everyone. Thanks so much for watching. Did you know that I'm live five days a week on Twitch? Come join us to watch me live, ask questions, or chill with the community. Click the link in the description below to follow and be notified when I'm live. And while you're down there, make like a sandwich and sub to this channel for more fresh Baylor content. Ta-ta for now.